All right, I think we'll get started here. Um, first off, I just want to thank you all for tuning in today to the May Marketing Sharing Series featuring um, local, organic, and fair trade sustainable sourcing. Um, so this webinar is brought to you today by Margo and Derek from Fair Trade America, and they have been kind enough to provide us with a number of resources that are available um, both online and in-store, or both available for both online and in-store use. Um, and the recording for this webinar, as well as those resources, will be on the MOA after this webinar. Um, and I'll also email it out to you all, so don't you worry. Um, so along with uh, the wonderful webinar we're about to have from Margo, um, we'll do some Q&A at the end here. So if you have any questions, I would encourage you to chat them in the chat box to everyone, and we'll we'll cover those at the end. So without further ado, I want to pass it over to Margo, and she'll take it away. Thank you so much, Maggie, uh, and hello, Infra. It's really exciting to be here today. Uh, I'm delighted to sh uh, join you all and share a tool that we're excited about. Um, Maggie mentioned Local Organic and Fair Trade. We love this acronym LOFT because it really helps us communicate fair trade to consumers. Um, and so before we get started, I just also want to shout out my local Washington, D.C. Infra stores. Glens Garden Market and Yes Organic Markets. Um, I and all of the other employees here at Fair Trade America are very loyal customers, um, and so we're excited not just to partner with you on some of these tools, but also love to see all of the great work that you guys are doing to bring sustainable food to consumers here in Washington, D.C. and all around the country. Um, so today I'm going to share with you um, with a huge focus on customers today, because they are your most important audience, um, who and what is fair trade, how to explain that to the customers that you're working with every day, the LOFT tool, Local Organic and Fair Trade, how that can make you look good to your customers, um, and when it's possible, you're working already with local uh, and organic, but then how to add and incorporate fair trade in the way that you talk about sustainability, especially when it comes to products that you can't get from a local farmer like bananas um, or coffee. And then I'm going to share some sustainability marketing resources that we have available for you to download and use for free um, that, as Maggie mentioned, are going to be available on your members only infra portal and some of which will be sent out after the webinar. Uh, and then a little bit about um, some sourcing options because we're really excited about um, how you can potentially use fair trade produce, uh, especially to communicate some of your sustainability story to your customers. So today I'm going to give you some tools to help connect your customers better to the work that you guys are already doing in fair trade and then also some options to scale it up if you're interested. Um, and just so you know, today I'm going to be talking about the Fair Trade International System. I know you work a lot with organizations like Fair World Project to learn and discuss the differences between a lot of the Fair Trade labels that you may have seen out there. Um, some of the other examples are these ones on the right hand side of your screen. Um, so today I'm going to be focusing on the Fair Trade International System, this blue and green guy that you've seen on bananas and coffee and you probably have many of these products in your stores already. So some of this will sound familiar, but I hope that the way that I'm sharing it will make it easier for you to share some of this information with your customers after the webinar. So fair trade, the international system, works with producers around the world and with brands and retailers to help bring equity and sustainability to supply chains for products that we depend on. Um, we're really interested in working with businesses that are committed to triple bottom lines that ex uh, invest not only in profit, but also in the people and the ecosystems where our food is coming from. Um, our most important partners are the producers that we work with. So in the fair trade system, producers are the ones who actually hold the certification. That means the work that they do for sustainability on their farms is coming 
to you directly through these supply chains and we're working with them to make sure that their farms are the state of the art and when it comes to um, environmental and social regulations. So that means no GMO seeds are allowed in our system, um, child labor is prohibited, and we're working with farmers all the time to make sure that they're getting the, what they need from the brands that source from them just as they provide us what we need in terms of the food that we're, um, we're getting from these wonderful people. Um, and so I'm going to encourage you to watch this video, which we can't play right now because of the webinar, but it's a wonderful look at the producers in their own words talking about um, how fair trade has impacted their lives and their families. And that'll be sent out following the webinar. Um, Going on, fair trade certification, a little bit more in depth, as I mentioned, is uh, is taking place on the farms themselves. So working with farmers directly in the form of cooperative organizations, fair trade works with them to make sure that we're reducing um, harmful chemical use, that no GMOs are allowed in their uh, in their production lines and that um, no deforestation is taking place. So this is thinking about a long-term approach to environmental protection. <clears throat> then we're looking also at labor standards. So that prohibits child labor, makes sure the farmers and the workers have freedom of association and that they're not discriminating against people who want to work um, based on protected classes like gender or religious beliefs. Um, Thirdly, all of our supply chain, the whole supply chain is handled fairly and comply, has to comply with the standards. So that means we're going out and auditing farmers and traders to make sure that these regulations are actually taking place, not just checking a box. Um, number four, fair trade guarantees producers a fair price so that they can recoup the cost of sustainable production. They invest so much in their small businesses, just like you guys do, and we want to make sure that they're getting paid fairly for all this wonderful work that they're doing for sustainability. And then finally, what's really interesting about fair trade is that when they sell under fair trade terms, small scale farmers and workers receive what's called a fair trade premium, which is like a community investment fund that they can invest back into their businesses and empower their communities. Um, as I mentioned just now, fair trade also certifies the full supply chain. Um, so that's not just good stuff happening on the farm. <laughs> it also means that all along the way, the exporters, the manufacturers that are sourcing from the farms, the brands that are buying from those uh, factories, and then consumers and uh, retailers like yourselves can be really confident that they're getting what they paid for, which is a certified product that came from a real person <laughs> that worked with fair trade um, to make sure that sustainability was happening at the farm level. And Fair Trade America works to label products. So going back to the one of the first slides um, with that symbol so that consumers can easily understand that that product came from a farm that was certified by us. All around the world, that represents about 1.6 million farmers and workers in over 75 countries, and that's all in the global south. So. Um, we really focus on the developing world because we feel that that's where we're most needed. We know that there's a lot of stuff going on, especially in the United States with farm workers. Um, and we are very proud to support all of the wonderful organizations supporting those people. Um, but we're very much focused on um, the global south because that's where the poorest people who need the most support are living and working. Um, and all around the world, fair trade is the most trusted ethical label, not just here, but also everywhere else. So it's pretty exciting to be part of such a large and robust system. Um, we're one of the offices that's working with consumers um, to help them understand what fair trade is. Um, so we provide consumer education, business support, and industry advocacy to help improve some of these supply chain practices. Um, and sometimes that's a really fun thing to do. So like in this photo here, um, we worked with the Bolivian and Guatemalan embassies here in DC to serve 12,000 cups of fair trade coffee to um, 
to new to fair trade people who had never heard of us before, many of them, um, and to talk to them about how uh, coffee is impacting Bolivian and Guatemalan farmers. You guys are already working in a lot of cases with many of the brands that partner with fair trade. Um, I'm sure you recognize some of these equal exchange for their avocados and bananas. Organic India has all kinds of delicious tea that's fair trade certified. Um, and then chocolate companies like Tony's Chocolate Lonely, Endangered Species Chocolate, Divine Chocolate, and many, many others make up our family of brands that we work with. And all of them are doing awesome work with real farmers um, and very excited about sustainability. Um, and now transitioning to this concept that we're really excited about, local, organic, and fair trade. Um, we like to throw around the acronym LOFT a lot because it's really easy to remember. Um, your customers care about local, they care about organic, and LOFT is a good way to help them understand how fair trade fits into um, that concept of good for farmers, good for real people, good for the planet, investing in communities. Um, and so I'm going to walk you through a little bit about how to articulate that shared vision and how fair trade fits into, um, fits into this world of sustainable consumption. Um, so many consumers who are interested in uh, shopping local and shopping organic have a mindset about wanting to support small-scale family farmers, wanting to support small businesses, loving sustainability, wanting real humans to be connected to their food, um, and especially hoping that more of their money actually is going back to the farmers themselves and not just getting lost in this international trading market. So fair trade, <clears throat> fair trade customers also have some a lot of these shared values, and LOFT is a great way to put it all into one easy to remember acronym. Um, we all share these desires, and a good way to talk about it is through bananas. Everyone buys bananas. Everyone knows what they are. It's really easy to think about a banana growing on a tree or an herb if you want to get super technical. Um, and bananas are one fruit that you can't grow in the United States um, and that you really have to carry in your stores because that's something people expect. So it's a wonderful way to talk about fair trade because it's so easy to think about a banana being picked by a farmer and it doesn't change at all in between when it comes off of the tree. Um, and when you get it in the store. A lot of you are already carrying fair trade bananas probably through um, Equal Exchange's banana program. Um, but even if you are, it's still a wonderful way to talk about fair trade to your customers in a way that they can connect some of those lofty values to the bananas and talk about the great work that you guys are doing to support banana growers. Um, so zooming up a little bit, what, what is the point of fair trade bananas? So um, it's very, and this also goes back to why people care about supporting farmers through local agriculture. Um, banana, banana producers experience many of the same challenges that local farmers do as well. So because of climate change, they're seeing reduced productivity. They're seeing um, a lot of market fluctuations, they're seeing increased cost of production, that, but they still see their traders wanting the exact same cheap, cheap prices. Um, and then workers are faced with low wages and also low status in many of the scenarios in which they're growing. So this is, these issues are common to farmers all over the world. Um, in the United States and in the countries like Ecuador, Costa Rica, Colombia, where bananas are grown. Fair trade works on some of those big issues to, make, to help give farmers a voice so that they can deal with those challenges in a way that amplifies their voices and attacks the root of the problem, not just the symptoms. So these 
are structural issues that are pervasive throughout farming all over the world. And fair trade is a way for farmers to come together to act as a group um, and to get credit for all of the investments in sustainability that they're doing. Um, so when you're supporting fair trade, that's what you're supporting and that's what you can communicate to your customers. When we're also, and then giving a more specific example, um, we also, when we're working with uh, some of these um, livelihoods, you're able to use it to address some pretty challenging issues. So through some fair trade sourcing programs in Colombia, for example, retailers and brands were able to support greater gender equity being brought to the banana sector. Um, Families in Colombia were able to invest in growing and producing bananas instead of um, some of the drug industry that was there before and were able to use that to transition out of some of the political upheaval that had plagued them since the 70s. And then it's really a wonderful way for, through the, um, through the collective action structure, for workers to be able to have a voice in getting the, safe environment that they need so that they don't aren't exposed to chemicals um, so that they have adequate working conditions and so they're paid fairly for all of the hard work that they do so this is how we're thinking about in a macro and a micro sense of fair trade affecting real people um, and this is true not just in bananas, although we're, we've been talking about that as the example, but for thousands of fair trade products and millions of people and their families all over the world. So when you're engaging with fair trade, it's very similar in the way that you're engaging with local because this is like very connected to real people. Um, so for example, this, uh, father to Kembi and his two sons from Papua New Guinea is part of the Niknasi Farmers Cooperative um, and through the fair trade premium they were able to diversify their income by planting uh, wine grapes in the highlands of the um, area that they're growing coffee in as well. Um, we have families that are working in West Africa in cocoa where like with divine chocolate through Coapa cocoa, the name of their main or the name of their cocoa cooperative where they source from where women are able for the first time to get numeracy and literacy training. Um, working with uh, families in Indonesia, like this one, uh, the husband Saiban and his wife Alicia, who use the fair trade premium to rebuild and reinvest in their coffee groves following the earthquake in 2004. Um, and in 2015, it was really exciting for them because they were able to prioritize shifting to shade grown coffee and planting shade trees and doing environmental education for the community so that they would protect um, their future and their livelihood and their ecosystem through fair trade. Um, cotton also has huge impact. So you may have heard that um, cotton farmers are really beleaguered because of um, inputs from the, from big ag where they're like facing a crisis of suicide. Um, but many farmers like Natin Jat, who's um, here on the second to left, um, he's been far he's a fifth generation coffee farmer and wants to continue doing so because it's his livelihood um, and he wants to be part of that generational legacy. But he also aspires to get a job in his village government because he's learned so much from working in the fair trade cooperative system that he feels empowered to share some of that um, collective action and exciting self determination with the rest of his community. Um, we also have honey, um, like this family, Stanos and Estela from Las Tablas, Nicaragua, who used fair trade premium to diversify from coffee so that they were able to get an additional income through honey. Um, this family from India used uh, the, their fair trade premium to build a new house for the first time with a, a brick house with a tin roof so that they wouldn't have to rebuild it every time after the monsoon. 
And then going back to bananas, this one is the most special to me because um, it's from an equal exchange cooperative, El Guavo in El Ordo, Ecuador. Um, and Fabian Sanchez, the dad, has been um, part of this co-op for 10 years. And it's special to me because Ecuador is where I got my fair trade start working with uh, banana growers with sugarcane and um, cocoa. So I feel very, just really passionate about how fair trade affects real people's lives. And as uh, Fabian says, um, fair trade gives me and my family security and stability for the future. So we're thinking how is how can we support these families in going forward with their lives, deciding what they want their future to be, and making sure that they have the livelihoods to do so. Um, so if all that sounds good to you, then here's some fair trade resources to help your customers make those lofty choices. Um, we're delighted to share some of these resources with you that are free for you to have right now. I already sent them to Maggie, so they're going to be available for you to download on the members only portal after this. Um, and then we'll follow up, of course, with um, an email from me so that you'll um, be able to ask me any questions as well if you have specific questions for your stores. So here's an example of how um, you can use fair trade in your weekly circular. Um, it's very simple to just show fair trade products together. You don't need a lot of space to help educate consumers about the work that you're doing um, and to show them a few examples of all of the fair trade products that are available in your stores um, and give them sort of a little taste of all the good that you can do by buying these responsibly sourced products. So that's one thing that you can do to educate the customers. Um, we also have given Maggie some um, files that you can download for free and print to use in your store, like point of sale signs, um, shelf signs that show the fair trade label um, and explain some of the products that are available that are labeled in your store. So definitely check that out. And if you're interested, you can download it for free and print it. Um, if you like that stuff and you have consumers that love swag, as many do, and they like to decorate themselves, um, I'm going to have my email available for you at the end, so feel free to write, and we'll send you fun stuff like stickers, buttons, pens that you can give out in your store for free to your customers to help them get more excited about fair trade. And these are really great for kids, too, because we got to get them all while, while they're young, right? Um, we also have a variety of digital resources for you to use. Um, we're, we just wrapped up Fair Trade Day, um, so you guys may have seen that as uh, World Fair World Project was your partner on that. Um, we're always happy for you to crib from our uh, social media or from the blogs that we write um, and to share that on your own channels uh, to help get your customers excited about Fair Trade if they're following you online. Um, we also have really neat video resources if you're looking for um, stuff for your newsletters uh, that people can watch on our YouTube channel. You guys can feel free to download and send those around. We even have a virtual reality 360 video that you can download. Um, I sent that link out as well. Um, and that can give your customers a tour of a coffee farm in El Salvador. Um, all you need is your phone and you can get one of those little headsets <laughs> for pretty cheap if you want to try it out and put it on. It's really cool, but you have to be holding on to something because it gets a little overwhelming when you're looking all around at the coffee trees and going in the person's house and everything. So that one's really fun. And then lastly, your customers care about food, and a lot of them have very passionate um, and knowledgeable uh, interests that they want to know more about. So if you're interested in helping educate your shoppers through your social media, your website, your newsletter, um, we have all kinds of deep dives that you can use to share about the good work that fair trade is doing with farmers and help them tell that message of 
these are real people, just like when you're caring about local, you care about real farmers, fair trade is about real farmers. So if you want to know about child labor and how fair trade's combating that, if you want to know what um, fair trade's doing on the environment and how to share that with your customers, we can we can get you everything you need to know and help your customers get really educated. So I hope that you guys will take advantage of some of those resources as well. Um, and just on the last section, um, every choice that you guys make in your sourcing is a chance to create impact for fair trade farmers um, and get those <laughs> excuse me, products to consumers who care about the farmers that you're working with. Um, as I said in the beginning, we're very excited about the opportunities in fair trade produce um, because that is an easy thing for people to understand. Just like in local, people understand when they hold a vegetable or a fruit in their hand that that came from the soil and that a real person picked it and brought it to them. So if you want to um, deepen your fair trade commitment in that way as well, then we have a few produce traders that we work with. You may already be working with some like Equal Exchange with Fife, um, Index Freshes Avocados, Prometos have going to have man fair trade mangoes come out for the first time this year. So it's lots of exciting opportunities for delicious non-US available fruit for um, for your customers. And then also these are a couple of wholesalers that we work with, Four Seasons, Alberts, and Earls. Um, and then you also probably already have very strong relationships with some of your wholesalers, but if you're interested in getting more fair trade products in your stores, definitely check out what KHE and UNFI have to offer. They have, they have everything we have, so they're who you should go to. Um, and just want to back that up to to advocate or to loft again. Um, we're so proud to be able to share this um, concept with Infra because we feel like it's perfect for your customers. Um, you guys are already doing a really strong job in the small to small model of working with local farmers and have a great fair trade commitment in many cases. So we're just very excited to be able to help you tell that story to your customers and articulate this shared vision of food justice that both of our organizations have. Um, we're here to support you in any grassroots outreach that you have that you need to build that movement with your customers and I really hope you'll take advantage of some of the materials that we've created that you can use for free um, so please check those out at the end um, so that wraps it up and before we go on to questions um, I just wanted to share my email and Derek's email who's going to jump on to answer any questions that you may have about sourcing. Um, so please reach out to me if you'd like to discuss how to explain fair the fair trade system to your customers, um, how LOFT can work for you to communicate fair trade in language that's meaningful to your customers, or if you need any support on any of the marketing materials that I've provided. And likewise, Derek is always available for any of your sourcing questions and needs. Um, because we really value the work that you are doing to bring great food to conscious consumers, and we're here to support you. So thank you so much for joining us today and for listening to this lofty webinar. Um, thank you for helping us change the world one customer at a time. <laughs> thank you so much, Margo, for that informative webinar. We so very much appreciate it. Um, so as we said, if you have any questions, please feel free to chat them in the everyone um, chat field. Um, and then Margo and Derek will be reading them and answering them in order. And then if you do have any questions that come up later, you can certainly email Margo or myself, whichever um, works better for you. And then I would also just put a small plug in for the Infraannual Conference. So be sure to register for the Infraannual Conference today because Margo and Derek will be there. So you can meet them in person and get to know um, how you can deepen that commitment with fair trade. So without further ado, questions? I think Derek, Margo, you can take it away. Yeah, um, 
I don't think I can unmute Derek. Could um, I'm here. Oh, you are. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So hopefully he can see that. Um, if not, Margo, in the meantime, do you want to address the first question that came in? Um, I was not able to see it. Let me just. Okay. It says, Caesar Chavez is a highly controversial character. How is it that you quote him? Um, well, we think um, controversy can be a good thing because it starts conversations. Um, and so whether you agree with his politics uh, or not, he has been very quite influential in how the American farm workers movement views itself and some changes that took place um, in when when he was working. So um, we don't mind controversy. We actually bring it up sometimes because the work that we're doing uh, with sourcing challenges a lot of the existing structures that that take place every day within our food system. So um, even if you don't agree with them, we're still happy that you're interested in talking about it. So I hope that um, that gives a good answer. I'm happy to follow up as well. It looks like some people in the crowd thought it was a good answer, so nice job. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, any other questions? And Maggie, I'll just pop in real quickly. Uh, oh, I, I did just see um, uh, that somebody asked a quick question, and that's why do uh, businesses choose to be fair trade certified? Um, I think that um, I can take that one real quickly, and Margo, feel free to pop in if you'd like at any time. Um, businesses choose to be fair trade certified for a number of different reasons. Um, some of them are to try and connect with the consumer in a, a more pointed way. Um, fair trade, as Margot uh, shared and represented in the webinar, um, really focuses on a whole host of issues. And I think one of the most exciting pieces is, as I've gotten more engaged in fair trade has been to learn how many different angles we can really share this story, whether that be through the environmental work that we're doing, through the work that we do in building communities um, and providing um, some of the uh, uh, support in harnessing um, the ability to restore power to some of these uh, farmer communities where they're able to uh, make choices for their communities and themselves for what works best for them, um, to even uh, taking time to assure that um, we're really looking through a number of different social constructs um, and addressing them. So, you know, it, it's a great story to tell, but then sometimes businesses are simply uh, trying to do the right thing. Um, Equal Exchange is a great um, uh, partner with us and has really done a wonderful job of, of doing their best to really change the terms of trade. And they're really harnessing the fair trade vision of using trade as a tool to put the power back into the farmer and the producer's hands um, and really help to uh, reduce uh, uh, extreme poverty in uh, developing countries. So there's so many different reasons that people are trying to become fair trade certified. Um, some of them can be for their business, some of them can be for the consumers, um, but ultimately at the end of the day, they're trying to circle right back to that producer or farmer. Margo, anything to add on that? Um, no, I think, well, I think, yeah, that about covers it. And I would just summarize by saying fair trade is kind of great in that it it touches almost every issue that you could care about if you care about food. So the, from the people who work in it uh, to the next generation of farmers um, to the environmental impact of our food system to fairness in economic um, equity between trading systems. So there's really room for everybody in fair trade. And one of the things we try to do with the businesses we work with is help them articulate that what are they the most passionate about and how does fair trade help them fulfill their sustainability goals. Um, so that is one of our biggest motivations in um, helping some of our, our brand partners that we work with and some of the retailers here. Um, so that's why we uh, we do all this work to support them. 
I saw one question uh, about how fair trade relates to B Corporation certification. Great question. Um, so we overlap um, somewhat with the B Corp regulations. Uh, I, one of our favorite brand partners to work with is Ethical Bean Coffee and their uh, marketing director who's in charge of their B Corp mem um, B Corp certification as well, recently told me that they get like 70 points just for being fair trade certified. So um, fair trade can make up a big component of getting to B Corp certification, even though we focus on different components of the business practices. So um, many B Corps are also fair trade. Some other um, examples are divine chocolate um, and uh, Shoot, I'm blanking on some of the other ones, but I can get you guys a list because it's really long. Um, and then we have partnered with B Corp in the past on consumer activations as well, because um, we want to showcase fair trade similar to how I did today in the webinar as part of an overall system of sustainability. We don't think that fair trade can or should stand alone. It addresses some pretty specific components of what's going on in our food system. And we need to link up with other organizations that are addressing others, um, because if we do that, then we can move forward to an overall sustainable consumption situation instead of all uh, working in silos side by side. So we really love working with other organizations in that respect. Um, the more we can get this message about overall sustainable consumption to customers, the better for the farmers that we work with. So we really need those ally organizations like B Corp and like Infra. Uh, Margo, I saw another quick question pop through uh, from Ryan. Uh, Ryan asks, how does Fairtrade America differ from other Fairtrade certifiers? Are there universal standards? Uh, great question. Um, there's definitely a number of fair trade entities out there, um, and without going into depth of the differences in each one of them, uh, the first answer to all that is no, that there's not a universal standard. Um, uh, back when fair trade uh, became um, uh, more or less an entity that, that gathered around what became Fair Trade International um, before, before it was uh, the Fair Labor Organization, um, really um, tried to bring all of that together under Fair Trade International. So we've been, what, what at one time we would have considered the international or the universal standard. Since then, a number of fair trade organizations have popped up, um, some aiming to achieve very similar things, um, some taking different routes to try and achieve uh, some similar things. So some of the fair trade uh, certifications that you'll see um, uh, will uh, be working here domestically within the United States or moving into areas that um, we haven't technically worked in. Um, some of the standards uh, within some of the other organizations um, are working to allow uh, more people to participate uh, within, um, within the fair trade system, um, within uh, different products or um, different types of farmers. Um, what we've really hope, uh, honed in on um, and what we've done is assuring that we have one certifier through the entire supply chain from farm uh, all the way to end brand uh, that certifies that entire supply chain through our sister organization FlowCert so that we have full supply chain transparency um, and the ability to really see what's happening in that supply chain. Um, and then assuring that those are the most rigorous standards and we don't uh, find a lot of flexibility within them because in order for us to really uh, tackle these complex issues, um, sometimes we have to really work in complex ways. So while it might be frustrating um, to go through some of the certification steps, um, it's really important for us to assure that that's the best way to, to solve some of those problems. So I would be really happy to hop in deeper um, to some of the specific uh, differences in some of the organizations if have, people have questions offline, and we may have some resources on that as well. Um, the next question I see is that uh, somebody says they really like the concept of loss, loss uh, but what can they do with that? Um, Margo, do you want to take that one? 
Sure. Um, I think that there's a ton you can do with it. And in some ways, you guys are probably better to um, answer that to each other than I am, because you're the ones who know your customers best and know what resonates with them. Um, but I would say, um, for example, even talking to your employees about it so that you, I know you have very discerning and question asking customers um, because I'm like that when I go into Yes Organic Market or Glen's Garden Market and I want to know exactly where everything came from. Um, so I think train, doing trainings for your staff so that they can understand and articulate to your customers what fair trade is and how it fits into the same value system as local and organic consumption um, is one great first step. Um, another thing you can do is potentially do um, these little, uh, in, your, in your print materials, if you do local or if you do sale pages, you could have a little page showing um, a local and organic and a fair trade product together and just introduce your customers to that in that way. Um, I could see it working great as a, an end cap um, for like an ingredient like I don't know, <laughs> maybe strawberry banana shortcake or something like that, where you have all of the ingredients together and uh, show what they, how they all fit into a sustainable recipe or something like that. So um, our goal was here was to show you kind of um, this philosophical overarching way of thinking about fair trade in the context of the rest of uh, a sustainable food system. Um, and we also think that uh, uh, there's a lot of organic and um, lo and local signage and point of sale materials that you guys are already using in your stores from what I've seen. Um, so I think just adding fair trade to that and then training your staff um, on how to talk about that to customers would be a wonderful first place to start. Wonderful. And that looks like the last question that's come through. Oh. There is another question. Um, okay, let me read this out loud and then process it. Um, there's clearly a divisive line in the country as far as food uh, consciousness is concerned. Having come from Colorado and now living in Tennessee, I'm seeing a distinct difference in the amount of concern and education there is here. Is the organization doing anything to increase awareness in targeted areas like the South where food uh, consciousness rarely exists? Um, this is a good question, um, I, and Margo, I'll let you take uh, part of this, but I'm just going to try and take a little bit of a stab at it. You know, our our mentality at the moment um, is that uh, we are trying to talk to a number of different audiences, one of which is the consumer, um, but we're also doing um, our best to enable uh, our brands and uh, our retailers to help tell that story. Uh, they uh, they really know our cu the customers really well and the base of that. Um, so we've really tried to, to create materials and items uh, to harness them to be able to tell that story so that we can continue to really work with businesses to um, bring more fair trade uh, to the market. As we really look, though, particularly in specific areas, um, we have done a little bit of market research on um, some specific areas. Um, and where uh, fair trade might be a little bit more tangible. Um, I don't know the depth of all of that research, and I'd have to dig into it a little bit, um, but we have done a little bit of kind of surveying of areas around the, around the country. But uh, right now, I don't think that we're doing a, a huge amount um, to focus on areas where there might not be the, the high level of food consciousness like there is um, maybe out west or in the upper northeast. Um, Margo, do you have anything on that? Yeah, I'll just go into a little more depth about that market research. And if it's of interest to Infra members, I'm also happy to share some of the highlights of that research with all of you because I think it's got some information in there that we're, that is very relevant to the conversation we're having right now and can inform some of the ways that you're thinking about how to talk to your audiences and your customers too. Um, so our market research focused on major metro areas uh, and college towns because we thought to start off, um, it's great to, it's kind of common knowledge that 
in out west and in some coastal cities that fair trade is already more widely available so we'll start there um, and then also thinking about who are passionate consumers maybe if they don't uh, always have enough money to buy at their highest ideals but they're very um, excited about telling everybody what the right thing to do is college students so we're looking at college towns um, and how to uh, engage them better. And interestingly, uh, one of our biggest target cities that came out of that market research was the um, Houston area, which um, is in the South, and I wouldn't necessarily have um, not being from Texas myself, known that Houston was going to be a great ripe hotbed for fair trade consumers. Um, so that was really interesting. Um, and then another thing that was interesting about uh, that is that many of the college towns that were targeted um, were in smaller, um, more rural areas, um, but that because of their high population of um, young people who could be good advocates for a food system and grow into um, being more conscious consumers once they graduate and get jobs and have more income available, um, how are we going to target those people um, at a time when they're very receptive to potentially hearing about um, some fair trade messages. So um, we're, we're definitely working on it. There's a lot to be done in terms of raising consumer awareness of fair trade. That is for sure, um, but that's one reason why we try to work so closely as Derek said with our brands to help them articulate their fair trade story and why we're very excited about working with retailers that are already engaging with these consumer groups and providing you guys with the resources that you need to help educate them um, and so that they're excited about buying these products in your stores. Wonderful. These are some really great questions. Um, yeah. I'm quite, quite pleased. Um, and Me too. Very thoughtful, everyone. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, if anyone has any final questions, um, feel free to chat them. Otherwise, um, as Marco said and as I said, um, you can email them to us and we're more than happy to get you the answers and the resources that you're looking for. Um, but I just want to thank you guys again for presenting. It's been wonderful and uh, we so appreciate the partnership and help with getting these resources to the stores, to the infra stores, the retailers, um, and ultimately to the consumer. Um, so thanks again, and I'll be emailing out these resources, uh, the recording, the presentation, and all the deliverables um, that you can pass on to your consumers shortly after this webinar. So thanks again, Margo and Derek, for um, all the wonderful words, and if you have anything else to say, feel free. Thank you, Maggie. It's been a real pleasure to work with you in putting this together, and we're so excited to be able to share some of these resources with Infra members. Uh, I really hope you guys will take advantage of them, and we're, we'll look forward to meeting you in person at the conference coming up soon. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thanks, everyone. Bye.